Hello everyone, I'm Iron Phoenix and welcome back to Industrial Craft 2. And today we're going to be looking at the heat mechanic. This is the second of the, uh, the two videos I wanted to make. The first being the reactors. That's the, the construction of the reactors is covered in a different video. This is talking about the heat mechanic and quite that me what that means for the player. So, the heat mechanic is... Mm, it's not exactly new, but it used to be a case where in your reactor heat was bad unless you were using MOX in case in which case heat was good until the heat became bad again and your ex reactor exploded and wiped out half your base. So it's changed a little bit from that. So now we have I'll do the consumers first. So we have two heat consumers. We have our fermenter. We also have a thing called a sterling generator. Uh, I'll just place these here so I can show you these. So these spots here, they're different for some reason, but they, they do the same thing. Um, they take in heat at, at that point there and they do things so the sterling generator will produce um, energy from heat and this is a variable EU supply it depends on how much heat it is getting so if you put in say four heats there you'll get four EU out uh, I think the maximum I've got it up to at the moment is 24 but I mean that might change depending on how the heat mechanics change here is the fermenter, and now the fermenter is used for turning biomass into biogas. And biogas can be used to charge your jetpacks, it can also be used in a semi fluid um, reactor to create EU, and it can also be used in, a, in one of the heat producers, I think it's the liquid heat producer, to make heat and yeah you put biomass in there and you add heat and it converts into biogas i am assuming at this point that all these liquids can be piped around as normal but i can't test that because there are no um so so billcraft is not on 1.6.10 uh, 1.7.10 yet and neither is thermal expansion. Right, okay, so that's those two. Let's talk about the heat producers. Just gonna clear some space here. And we'll talk about that one in a second. But for now, the heat producers. So we have our solid heat generator, our fluid heat generator, our radioisotope heat generator. That is different from the thermoelectric generator. They are two different things. So you do still have the thermoelectric generator if you want to create an infinite amount of variable energy. And uh, this is specifically for heat. We also have the electric heat generator, the liquid heat exchanger and the water heater. Now the water heater is a work in progress as you can see. If you right click on it, it's work in progress. Um, don't know what this is going to be used for yet but the tooltip says that the input is 1 to 100 heat. So I'm not completely sure what that's going to be used for yet. Possibly to make steam. So maybe that's our, uh, another consumer that should really go over there then. Right, um, but I'll probably do on a video on that once it actually comes. I thought I'd cover that now in case people were asked what was that for. I think it's to make steam out of heat. You know, you put water in, you get steam out, and then you run that through a turbine, I assume. So anyway, solid heat generator it does what it says on the tin. You put solid fuel in, you get heat out of there. Fluid heat generator, you put fluids in. So biogas and biomass work. You put your biogas in like that, and you get 16 heat out. 
your radioisotope heat generator works in the same way as normal thermoelectric generator. You put in your pellets in there and you get heat out. Electric heat generator is a little bit different in that you put energy in but you don't get heat out unless you put in your heat uh, conductors. Now this can take six, it's a variable heat supply and it goes up to 24 EU. The, the smallest amount you can pump out is four. Each time you, each one of these um, allows you to transfer four more. And last but not least is the liquid heat exchanger. Now this is a slightly different thing because it's used for two different purposes and it's also changed. So I'm just going to make two of these so we can show you each of these. So you can put in lava cells. You can put in lava and this will make heat and it will also make a ho-ho lava as a byproduct. It basically just cools everything down. Now, if we were to put a, let's put a fermenter, or no, let's put a sterling generator alongside each one of these. So it can lead off some of this power. So that will give us um, 20 heat. Um, I'm just going to see if that changes that this mechanic has suddenly changed. Oh, I was going to say, um, right. let's put in some bio gas, uh, pipe bio mass. Yes, that's transferring 20 heat. Okay, if I was to put in hot coolant. Yes, I should also note that all of these um, machines can be rotated, but the nodules do need to meet. So that bit needs to attach to that bit. It seems it doesn't want to transfer... I don't know what these bits do, but it seems to go up to 20 heat. Um, so the way that these work anyway, your lava goes in, you get ho ho lava out. In the case of, and when it's full, it's not going to transmit any more heat, so, you know, drain the cell um, or drain the tank as much as you possibly can. Um, with the liquid heat exchanger, it's taking in hot coolant and it's um, putting out cold coolant. Now, this is very useful for when you're dealing with nuclear reactors because they are going to be pumping it, taking in coolant and pumping out hot coolant. You have to click on the hatch um, to do it. So let us let's build a simple design that I've used in the past. So first we need our fuel rods. I'm going to use two of these and I'm also going to need some heat vents I need six of these now it's not a particularly efficient design but it's reasonable it's pretty simple just for demonstration purposes so we put in our advanced heat vents So, we put in our coolant, and we need to find, work out how to do turns on. I think a lever next to the redstone port should do it. And there we go, so we are now making um, hot coolant um, from this. now. Without coolant, this is going to start um, rising quite dra dramatically. So it's important to um, keep these stocked with coolant. So even though you've got sort of heat vents and the like, 
um, it's not going to be enough. Um, you're going to need to make sure you've got a good amount of coolant, or else your reactor is going to go boom. But the hotter the reactor, the faster you're going to make coolant, which means the faster you're going to make heat. So yeah, and, and that's basically the, the the new mechanic. It's not particularly difficult. It's just a little bit awkward in places, you know, having to um, mate these together, and also the fact that you can only seem to have a heat producer with a heat consumer. You can't sort of split the heat around. But that, you know, it's early days, and they might do something. And I'd be interested to see wh where, the, where the next ste step is for this, the water heater. And in fact, for this as well, because we might see um, steam produced from here, I don't know. But anyway, that is the new mechanic. Um, I like it. I like the way the IC2 is going. So, for now, I will say thank you very much for watching. And as always, if there's, you've got any questions, please ask. And I don't know what's going on there. Um, and I'll whack all the um, I'll whack the link to the Jenkins as always down in the description. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.